Let's start yeah. with the, the hockey world, Eddie. Yeah. Um, let's start uh, with what you think of what's going on in the bubble and how yeah. you think no fans is affected or no, I guess, home mm -hmm. ice advantage, how you think that has yeah. affected the way that things have played out for Lord Stanley's mm -hmm. Cup so far. Well, full disclosure, I'm currently in quarantine in the Edmonton bubble right now. Okay. I just got here a couple of days ago, so I have a couple more days of quarantine, and uh, meaning I uh, can't leave my room. They come and test me every every day, once a day, and once I am cleared, then I'll be able to get amongst the uh, the NHL family here in the bubble and be able to get to work and do the Oaks coverage and Derby coverage for us and then also the hockey coverage. But as far as the games, I... Uh, Honestly, Rich, I mean, I think they've been, I think they've been very entertaining. I, I think the uh, the understanding is that, yeah, there are, there are no fans, but as a player and having played in the league as long as I did for 16 years, is you know, no disrespect to the to what I think are the best fans in all the sports, is that wh when you're playing, you're really not hearing, you're not thinking, you're not, you know, you're 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 not wandering, right? You you don't know, you're just playing. The only time you know there's fans is after either something happens or you're sitting on the bench and. You're looking into an empty arena or what have you. So I think the mental challenge for all of these sports, not only the National Hockey League, but for the WNBA, the NBA, Major League Baseball, you know, whatever else we got going on, soccer, is that it's that, uh, you know, understanding that you got a job to do, but also respecting and knowing that we got a lot going on in the real world and we're here to entertain. And that's for us as broadcasters as well. But I think for the most part, the games have been pretty, pretty darn good i think they've been entertaining i think that uh, the teams are are all in and uh we get we're down to you know we're down to seven we're down to seven teams right now and uh three three of the four series uh were on the brink and uh, all those teams staged off uh elimination and now we're going to have a bunch of game sixes so all in all i think it's been pretty good and oh by the way a tip of the hockey helmet to the national hockey league They've done an amazing job in, in both bubbles in Toronto and in Edmonton. And the leadership of the commissioner, Mr. Bettman, Bill Daly, the deputy commissioner, the board of governors, the players, the players association, the return to play committee, and all the medical people that are helping this go through. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been amazing to be, uh, to see what's taking place. And I think hockey fans have been entertained. And at the end of the day, Rich, that's, that's what we all want. Best team left in the bubbles is fill in the blank. I would probably say Tampa, uh, not knowing the injury to Nikita Kucherov, who you would argue is their best player. Uh, he got hurt the other night uh, in Game 5 against Boston, took an errant stick from Zidane Ochara. So, but the way that they've played, they have been able to play a hard game, a game that, uh, you know, tight checking, but also they've been able to play rich the type of game where, they can play the skill game and and and, and dictate that, that type. So uh, they've gotten great goaltending from Andre Vasilevsky, who is one of the best goalies in the league. So right now, uh, I would have to say the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, and uh, which which team uh, in the West? Which one do you take? Well, I thought Dallas was the sleeper at the start of the regular season prior to the pause. Right. Um, they didn't start off very well, but they've kind of found their game here. And yes, they've probably taken advantage of an opportunity with Colorado in the goaltending situation um, and then losing Eric Johnson, uh, the big defenseman. So they're up three to two. They had a miss. They missed an opportunity to end the series the other night. So now they have a game, a huge game six tonight. Um, I mean Vegas. You know Vegas looks like they they're the most complete team. Now they lost last night and got out goaltended. I shouldn't say they got out goaltended. I mean, Thatcher Demko of the Vancouver Canucks just, you know, he played out of his mind in his first playoff start and had 43 shots on goal and stopped 42 of them. So Vegas probably deserved a little bit better. When I But I look at the overall picture, you know, Vegas looks to be the the team that maybe just has it above everybody else in the West. But uh, I thought Dallas would give everybody a run. And, uh, you know, they're on the, they're, you know, they're on the verge of going to the conference final. So, don't underestimate the Dallas Stars. They're pretty good as well. And we'll see if it's uh, Philly or the Islanders uh, who right. can join uh, the Lightning. And then tonight, again, on NBCSN at 8 Eastern time, we'll see if Dallas can close out Colorado or the Avalanche can, I guess, pull a Denver Nuggets um, and force a Game <laughs> 7 here, you know. <laughs> See if they can uh, take some inspiration from uh, from the local basketball team there. Eddie Olchuk joining joining us. I guess let me ask you a question: uh, the bu the bubble uh, portal entry portal. Uh, literally, you are in your hotel room. You may not leave it. That is essentially what is happening right now. 
Uh, that is that is the uh, that is the protocol for anybody that um, comes into the bubble, and it's four straight days of uh, you know uh, in your room and uh, just doing what you need to do. And look, thankfully for me, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's Derby week, so I'm yes, I'm uh, I'm up to my ears in yes. horse racing, and I'm also up to my ears in keeping you know what's going on in the National Hockey League. So um, lots of uh, lots of face time. I just became a grandfather over the course hey. of the pandemic so i'm very proud of that my daughter my granddaughter audrey marie olchek was born on july the 7th so my son eddie and my daughter-in-law erica are proud parents and uh, we get to i get to see my granddaughter uh, all the time and uh, especially now with me being away so it makes it makes it helps pass the time Rich. Nope. and there was a nice way to wake up today when my my son and my daughter-in-law called me and there was my granddaughter on the other end of uh on the on the facetime so that was very cool so right look at hey it's what it is look at and we understand and yep. i understand what's going on in the real world absolutely 100 percent. and um it's part of the protocol to keep everybody safe and look at i think the league has had don't quote me i think they've had like thirty thousand tests now in the course of the first five weeks that they've been in the bubble or six weeks and uh you know they're perfect so whatever they're doing they're doing it right, and uh, I'll I'll be I'll be let out of my room on Friday, and there will be full bore. There'll be full full bore of, of pucks and ponies on the weekend for Eddie. Olsen. I was about to say you're going to be like coming out of the gate like uh, like a thoroughbred. <laughs> like you'll be bucking and you'll be bucking behind that door when he, when they can follow up. But a very important question then: Buck, is, bucking and squealing. That's exactly. right, exactly. It's a very important question before we move on to the horses. Is there at least a mini bar in that room? Eddie. Well, you're talking to somebody that is only, uh, I don't even know if drank is the right word, but I've only drank three times in my life. But you know no, what? no, 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 Eddie, I was not talking about that. I, I literally is like Toblerone, like, you know, I mean, like <laughs> like some snack and you know what I mean? You know what, Rich? I, you know what? I'm going to go through, hang on a second. I'm going to go through all these drawers right now while you got me on the air here. Let's right do now. it. What do uh, you got, Eddie? I'm going to tell you what I got here. I got, got um, so let's say I got the, the holy book here. Okay, that, that's good to have. Okay, what else? I have, uh, I have an iron. I have a... I have a safe for really, I have no reason because my wife has all my money. I do have a refrigerator. <laughs> wow. Okay. And uh, let's see. And I have a nice robe here at the, uh, at the nice Marriott. So that's uh, other than that, Rich. Other than that. That's, uh, that's all I got. Oh, my for God. That. They locked the door. I mean, at, in Edmonton Marriott. I mean, okay. <laughs> Listen, take the robe and put it on the Rich Eisen show, okay? <laughs> we'll send that up to Peacock flowchart. You know, we'll I, I, might, I, might, I might want to take this uh, this ottoman I got in the room here. The ottoman, little, uh, very yeah, good. We'll put that on expenses. The yeah. ottoman senators, everybody. Hey, now, that's a little bit of a dad joke hockey pun to move us or, to the— Or Dave Ottoman, or the, Dave Ottoman. <laughs> That's and I have, look. I have no excuse. I'm not in a bubble. I've just lost my mind. So let's move to the to the ponies yeah. here. Uh, yeah. Eddie Olchek here on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, Tis the law three to five. Uh, we're assuming is that an appropriate odds uh, for this horse? He's gonna. This horse is gonna repeat. What do you think? What do you got for me? Well, I mean, I think three to five would be generous if you could lock that in right now. I don't, I don't think he's going to be three to five. I think he's going to be less than that just because people know his history and the resume. I mean, he's won six or seven career races. Now, the only race he did not win was at Churchill Downs, but now that was on a sloppy track. It's supposed to be beautiful weather in Louisville on, on Saturday. So, I mean, look, at he is. He is the good. Uh, the horse that I liked going into the Derby, unfortunately, had to scratch because of a foot injury. Art Collector. Look for him in the Preakness in about, what is that, about four or five weeks from now, Rich. Art Collector looks like uh, a horse that people should be okay. taking notice of. So, look, at if you're in the, if you're in the, you know, making wagers on favorites, look, at I'm, I'm all for that. Look, at if you want to invest $5 and get back 7 uh, some people <laughs> don't mind that. If you want to add a zero to that, then, you know, hey. Eddie, let me uh, let me just interrupt you. We are not interested in that. We are absolutely <laughs> uninterested thoroughly in that. Uh, what what can you tell well, those? Well, Rich, who... hold on, Rich, hold on a second. Yes. Rich, Rich, yes. If, if you decided to bet five thousand to win on him and you got back seven thousand total, that's I mean that's a pretty good return on money in a matter of about two minutes and two seconds. You're making two grand on your money. Well, in in, in two minutes. Then right? let me that, interrupt you right there. I am thoroughly uninterested in that too. So let's find the 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 nice right, middle okay. so between betting five who, grand. Who, 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 <laughs> I, I am. I'll just say this for, for, for you uh, for your fandom there. Yes. I am not going to pick Tis the Law to win the Derby. Like I will be 
So like it's probably going to be 99.8% of, of the people out there are going to be right. picking or going to pick Tis the Law. I, I can't pick a horse two to five in an 18 horse field. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, I, I'm looking to a horse that I think in the morning line is 30 to one, is coming out of post position number three. The name of the horse is Enforceable. <laughs> Uh, of course, a hockey horse, guy likes enforceable. Come on, yeah, Eddie. Well, you know, hey, look at you, We all feel a little taller and a little stronger when we have some enforcers around us. Yes. Um, enforceable is a horse that is not going to be in the picture early, meaning he's not going to be near the front. He's probably going to be sitting, I don't know, maybe 12th, 13th, 14th in the race. I think a horse can get the mile and a quarter distance. A lot of these horses haven't run a mile and a quarter. Some have, including Tiz the Law, so he is proven at the distance, but I, I'm going to love the value of this horse. I think it's going to get every bit of 30 to one on this horse. And look at, even if you want to just put the horse, uh, put the money on this horse across the board, meaning win place or show, all the horse has to do is finish first, second, and third. And, and you're probably going to triple or quadruple your money. If the horse, horse happens to finish third, but I, I think the race is going to set up nicely for him. Now, is he classy enough? Is he good enough? He's stepping into the major leagues. Um, time will tell, but I think there's enough, uh, good things that can happen for him in this race to make a run, and uh, and maybe I'll get a little excited at the eighth pole, and maybe the three horse will come running and mow them all down at thirty to one, and uh, hopefully people will be able to cash in. So look at you, you, whether you want to use this horse as a win bet or a place or a show, that's one thing. But I, I would suggest using them in your exact as meaning your top two finishes or your trifecta uh, i think the three has been training well we had a much better post position than he's had the last couple of races so look at, i'm going to take a shot here but i'm going to put uh, i'm going to put a few bucks on the three horse enforceable to win the 146 running of the kentucky Derby. all right now when you say trifecta that means there's a third horse so let's just say yeah. somebody's like okay tis the law is going to win and uh, yeah, so a 17-5 sure. and then you trifecta sure. what are we well, sure. Again, sure. and this is just this is just you know for you know Watson giggles, uh, yeah, yeah, for, for you sure. know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm I'm gonna have a few of those uh, going three, on, on right. Saturday. How about this? I'm gonna be out of the bubble, and I'll be in the arena in Edmonton, uh, calling, doing the horse racing from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and calling and giving picks in Louisville. All right, let me. I'll give you some numbers here. You gotta use a three enforceable. Another long shot I think you should use is the 15 New York traffic. Okay. The six the 16 horse honor AP. And the 17 tis the law. So if you box the 3, 15, 16, 17, any combination of those four oh, horses that super. finish in the top three, uh, you know, you, you're going to, you know, you, you're going to make your money and then some because those are a couple of horses, New York traffic and enforceable are going to be every bit of, you know, probably north of 25 and 30 to one. So now the key is, is yeah. that tis the law finishes third. And then if you can get those other three horses in the top two, then you're going to get really get paid. So if you invest maybe twelve dollars or twenty four dollars in that wager, you might turn that. If the numbers come up right, you might to turn the twenty four dollars into maybe six or seven hundred. There you go. I'm glad you didn't say the fifty to one South Bend because as a Michigan Wolverine, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm glad you left South Bend out of it. Ed. I'll be very honest with you. Hey, just so, for people that know, real quick, uh, uh, King Guillermo, who is going to be the four or five, he is the six horse. King Guillermo is owned, I don't know if you know this, Rich, is owned by Victor Martinez, former Major League All-Star and uh, yeah. great hitter for the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, he owns King Guillermo. He's, he's only been horse racing, uh, I want to say, just less than the last maybe eight or ten months, but he's got himself a uh, – this horse is going to run good. You're going to you're gonna hear the name King Guillermo okay. uh, early in this race. I don't know if he can go that far, and he's been off, I think, for almost four or five months, but uh, just a little sports story there that uh, Victor Martinez owns, uh, owns the uh, – uh, four or five, the six horse King Guillermo. Love it, Ed. Thanks for the call. Appreciate you yeah. spending some time in the Edmonton bubble with us. But I, I mean, what's more 2020, uh, Eddie Olchek, than saying that you're in the Edmonton bubble to get ready for conference finals action in a pandemic for the NHL while covering the Kentucky Derby that's normally held the Saturday after the NFL draft. Now it's the Saturday before the NFL season. But that's that's 2020 for you right there. Rich, stay safe, and uh, you too. know what? Let's let's just get on the right side of this, and uh, everybody stay safe out there. And we'll look forward to talking to you soon. I yeah, I, absolutely. Time, so. Well, let's talk in the next couple of weeks as uh, as we'll get set safe. for for the NHL Stanley Cup final. That's Sounds Eddie Olchek joining talk us from soon. the Edmonton bubble, right here on the Rich Eisen Show and NBC. You like that video? Of course you did. Check out more right here.